This is the USS John F. Kennedy. Back in 2013, the US government committed to building the second ship of a brand new class of massive nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. At 1,100 feet long and displacing about 100,000 tons, Kennedy isn't just a warship, it's a floating city, powered by two nuclear reactors and designed to launch the most advanced aircraft in the fleet. Building it means taking millions of individual parts and assembling them into a single hull at Newport News, Virginia, the only shipyard in America with the toll's workforce and nuclear credentials to do it. Here, Kennedy is taking shape piece by piece, system by system. But alongside the engineering marvel is controversy, rising costs, repeated delays, and scrutiny over whether new technologies can live up to their promise. This is the enormous and highly complex construction project taking place at one of our nation's most important locations. The story begins in Virginia, where the James River meets Hampton Roads. Newport News Shipbuilding's Dry Dock 12, originally designed for commercial halls, is over 2,100 feet long and roughly 250 feet wide, giving the yard the footprint to assemble superlifts for a carrier and still move the dock gates and caissons as flooding and float off phases begin. The yard's 1,050 metric ton Big Blue Gantry train looms over that basin. It was upgraded in 2008 and has handled the heavy picks for every US carrier built at Newport News since the 1970s. Those two pieces of real estate, the dock and the crane, govern the geometry of the entire build. How big each block can be, how many device packages can be pre-installed, and how much structural and systems work can be finished before the lift. They also let the yard reduce the total number of lifts, which cuts alignment and welding hours at the dock. For Kennedy, the plan targeted about 445 lifts, which is 149 fewer than the final older generation ship. Before getting deeper into the build, there there's something important to note. The Ford class is a rethink of the proven Nimitz template, an advancement of almost every system on the carrier. The island was shifted aft and the flight deck reworked to improve aircraft flow, while automation and smarter layouts target smaller crews and lower maintenance. The first of the class, USS Gerald R. Ford, or CVN-78, was delivered in 2017. Kennedy is the second, slightly more advanced iteration. Modular construction is the backbone. Steel plate arrives, is blasted and primed, and becomes units that are joined in shops into sub-assemblies with foundations, stiffeners, and penetrations already cut. Those are welded into modules, which are then outfitted with miles of pipe runs, cable trays, and equipment foundations before they ever see daylight. The heavy lift choreography is painstaking. Consider the 932 metric ton lower stern, 30 individual units pre-joined, containing the steering gear rooms and power distribution space, set in place by a rigging team of roughly two dozen specialists in about an hour after days of preparation or the 588 ton island, the ship's command center for flight operations set on May 29th, 2019. The last major structural event was the 780 ton upper bow and forward flight deck installed in July, 2019, marking structural completion. Each one of those lifts depends on prior alignment, weld sequencing, and metrology work that controls heat input and shrinkage so later pieces still fit. Once the big steel is in, the yard begins the controlled transformation from steel box to working plant. Kennedy has 2,000 1,615 compartments. By mid-construction, the yard had turned over hundreds, and by mid-2022, it passed the 1,000 compartment mark. As a scale reference, the Ford-class wiring demand runs into eight figures. Gerald R. Ford required more than 14 million feet of electrical and fiber cable, and Kennedy is slated for about 10.5, of which more than 9.8 million feet were already installed by 2022. On October 29th, 2019, the yard began a controlled flood of Dry Dock 12 with more than 100 million gallons of water over several days. Intermediate gates in the dock's pressure relief systems manage loads as the hull first feels buoyancy and dock blocks start to unload. The christening a few weeks later on December 7th, 2019 was public, but for the build team, the real milestone was simply that the hull was pier side, energized, and ready to accept more systems, from propulsion auxiliaries to combat electronics. Ford class ships introduce a new A1B reactor plant with far more electrical generation capacity than the older class. It's estimated that Kennedy's twin reactors can generate up to 250 megawatts of electrical power, enough to run every sensor, radar, and system on board, and another 520 megawatts of mechanical power delivered directly to the propeller shafts. To put just the electrical side in perspective, 250 megawatts is roughly the continuous demand of 208,000 average US homes. That means the electricity from this one ship's reactors could power a mid-sized city, while still driving a 100,000 ton carrier across the ocean at more than 30 knots. 
aeronauts. The ship will include a new generation concept, known as Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMAUS for short. It's a linear induction motor catapult laid into the deck, backed by heavy electrical gear and energy storage below. Alongside that will be the Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG. AAG is a turboelectric system designed for controlled deceleration upon landing. It replaces hydraulic arresting engines with rotary water turbines and large induction motors, so the system can absorb and modulate energy over a wider aircraft weight range. Kennedy reached a key integration step on February 14, 2024, when the team conducted dead load launches to prove interfaces before risking aircraft. Topside, Kennedy differs from Ford in a way that matters to installers and testers. It's the first carrier to get the Spy 6V3 3D radar system. Even the elevators tell an interesting story. Advanced weapon elevators use linear motors and high strength doors to move 24,000 pound ordnance loads at roughly 150 feet per minute, more than double legacy capacity and speed. All of this unfolds inside an industrial base that spans thousands of suppliers across 46 states. The two carrier block buy for the future CVN 80 and 81 in 2019 wasn't about Kennedy directly, but it stabilized the carrier line and smoothed orders to vendors. Quantitatively, Kennedy's hull measures 1,106 feet long, with a flight deck about 256 feet wide. Those numbers are familiar for a US supercarrier, but the work content underneath is what makes the schedule. More than 2,000 supplier firms feed into perhaps 3 million piece parts on a Ford class hull, which converts to tens of thousands of shop and ship work packages, and on the order of tens of millions of labor hours from first steel cut to delivery. As I mentioned in the intro, the carrier was procured in 2013. The Navy now pegs CVN 79's total procurement cost at about $13.2 billion, and its delivery for March 2027. This was after shifting from a two-phase plan to a single-phase delivery to meet Congress's 2020 mandate that the ship be F-35C capable before post-shakedown work. The schedule move, originally July 2025, reflects the critical path on advanced arresting gear certification and continued work on the advanced weapons elevator, the same technology family that complicated the lead ship. Carriers are still a pillar of US force design. By law, the Navy must maintain not fewer than 11 operational carriers, and its force structure goal still calls for 12. This is because a nuclear carrier is a sovereign, mobile airfield that can surge combat power, signal in crises, and provide humanitarian response without host nation permission. Kennedy's delay briefly drops the force to 10 halls, which is why Congress keeps this specific carrier under a microscope. In short, the controversy is about cost, capability, and timing. The strategic rationale is about persistent reach, deterrence, and keeping the statutory floor intact. In the end, the USS John F. Kennedy is more than steel and reactors. It's a test of whether the Navy can turn lessons from Ford into a smoother, more capable build. Its $13 billion price tag and repeated delays make it controversial, but the payoff is a carrier with unmatched power margins, modern flight systems, and the potential to serve for half a century. When it finally joins the fleet, Kennedy will stand as proof of what it takes, and what it costs, to build a modern, advanced floating city of this scale. At BuildCore, we're building America, one story at a time. We cover some of the most impressive and headline-grabbing projects and topics across this great country. And with your help, the channel has grown to over 50,000 subscribers and reached over 10 million people. With that being said, thank you, and I'll see you next time.